Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and behind Miss Addie's ears. Oh, there's a doggy up ahead, so maybe I will carry this on in a second. What a great intro. <laughs> okay, so doggy passed and can now continue. I hope you guys are all well. As I said, welcome back to my channel and behind Miss Addie's ears. We're just currently on a hack, aren't we? Obviously, we're not in a school, are we? So that kind of gives the game away, Emily. Don't say the obvious. Um, but I kind of want to take this moment at the beginning of this vlog to apologise for the inconsistency of my YouTube because I know I am not getting vlogs out on, I want to say on time, but is there a time frame? Um, like quickly after they're actually being filmed, I'm not editing them very quickly. And I know I can be, and I have been in the past, I'm a bit flaky and all of that, but I feel like I have been really flaky recently. So I do apologize. Hopefully, to be honest, there just hasn't been an awful lot going on and I haven't, I've been so manic in work and also rather busy planning our wedding that's happening obviously later on this year. And I'll be honest, my brain just can't then cope with anything more. <laughs> I know that sounds really bad, but it, yeah, I have been ticking along. I haven't even been posting like regularly to Instagram, which at first annoys me and I get wound up by it and then yeah and then I leave it go a little while then I get a bit of stage fright I then record a story and then I still don't upload it and it's silly it is so so silly but that's that's me and I guess I don't want to say overthinking it but I just I don't know and then like oh nobody's gonna want to see it it's gonna be boring it's just the same content because like I say I have been just ticking along with the horses for the past probably three four weeks so like the last month I've been hacking lots we've been schooling schooling in our new dressel saddle which is very exciting um but nothing like majors happened we did have a lesson on Monday arena eventing which I could probably pop in a few little clips over the top but my, I was thinking do I make that into a vlog I didn't film like an intro or anything like that because I hadn't planned to but kind of glad I didn't because my mum's filming bless her heart wasn't the greatest even she said to me she goes did you feel seasick watching it I was like mm, yeah and like she would cut off say the top half of Addie's body I wouldn't be in shot or we'd jump the jump and you're still yeah so it just wasn't the best of filming um so I didn't make that into a vlog but we have got an awful lot coming up over the next I'm gonna say 12 weeks also an awful lot of the wedding planning has now been done so that I that's why I did it I wanted to kind of Chris might say that I was a bit of a bridezilla I wouldn't say that <laughs> I was just being organized and getting as much done as I could have possibly get done in January February knowing that I had obviously the eventing season starting and other exciting things like camp and things like that coming up so it has now enabled me to be more free to vlog get edit editing and get out there competing and eventing which yeah i think it's three weeks today that is our first event um are we fully prepared for it possibly not i really wanted to do more dressage if i'm honest i haven't done as much as i wanted to get done and then the next few weekends when there are dressage competitions on locally I'm actually unable to get there because I've got other plans, other commitments, other competitions like this weekend, like t this tomorrow. Um, I was going to say this weekend, but today's actually Friday. We are heading back to Pontesbull for another stab at their arena eventing, which I'm really looking forward to, especially after our lesson with Emily on Monday. I feel like that was a real good confidence buzz going into a new arena, new jumps that she doesn't know. Obviously I know because I have been there with Miss Lola. I also went there badminton prep with Spritey. I wonder if I can find any of that footage. Um, but yes, I went there on Monday and like I say it just gave us an awful lot of confidence which I'm really pleased that we did it we're coming up to a little canter path so uh BRB let's go and enjoy it shall we Addy? I don't know if I'm brave enough to do it one-handed what do you think Addy? I want left canter yes good girl that's our aim isn't it when I ask for what leg we make sure that we get that leg you're a good girl uh -uh, stay left Right, sorry. Yeah, no, I said the wrong word. 
you clever pony. And woo, 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 woo. Good girl. A very blabby start to this vlog, guys, but I thought I would start it today just to make it a little bit different because I feel like it wasn't actually that long ago that I posted the Pontesco Arena eventing vlog and otherwise it's going to be exactly the same. Now, I didn't show you really anything getting ready or what I'm packing, so I thought I would show you from kind of Friday afternoon, evening, would you say? I don't know. What time do you class as evening? Um... I don't actually know what time it is. Let's have a look. It is actually five o'clock <laughs> now that I've checked my watch, which I am also loving these lighter evenings. Um, but the plan is to get Addy out for this hack. As you've just seen, I am a, because our canter transitions aren't always the best, when I'm out hacking, that is when I try to practice on them. When I ask for left leg, we get left leg and well, I hope we get left leg, left lead um, and right lead. And if we don't get it, then I bring it back to trot. So thankfully, because I was doing that one-handed, we did get the right lead. Um, but that is actually something that I've been doing on our hacks is just practicing things like that. Hacking is great, great for that. Um, not so much in like a pressure of outline and in an arena, but, and we've also got a bit of length of time to be able to bring her back to trot and go again. And I've got to admit, I do think it's actually working. So I do love hacking for that sense. And actually it's really nice on a Friday just to get out for a hack and a nice chilled one. I went schooling last Friday evening and I think I was tired, like from, which sounds stupid, I know, but I think after a whole, and my work's been busy, like I said, and I think I was just a bit brain frazzled. So then to go schooling, and maybe I wasn't quite in the right frame of mind. And I do think on those days that you're actually better off leaving it than you are doing it. And I'm very pleased to say that I went schooling last night so that then tonight would just be a nice hack out and about. Um, and also it's very good for off terrain. So I don't know if I've shown this before, but we go right, don't we, Addy? Which you're probably going to know. Oh, maybe not. And then we've got a bit of through the trees. This is our little, I don't know, cross country prep. Um, which is very good. Just helps them get know where their feet are and get sure footed and things like that. So yeah, anyways, out for a hack with her, then gonna take Spritey for a little mooch and then pack up the car. I'm going with Carrie ann my sister-in-law again tomorrow. So I need to get all my stuff over. I don't need to, because we don't actually need to leave as early as we did last time because they're running a 70 before the 80, which is nice. So I'm not on until midday. Course walks at 12, I'm on at half 12, and then Carrie Ann has actually stepped up and is doing the 100. Basically, I just thought I would show you a bit of an insight of the night before. I think it's always so different when you're competing on a Saturday as opposed to a Sunday when you've been working all day Friday. Um, I've been for a little run with Nala as well, which was nice on my lunch break. But I think it's because you've only got like the evening part of your day on a Friday, as opposed to you slowly get perhaps things ready over the course of the day on a Saturday when you're competing on Sunday. So yeah, just thought I would take you along whilst we're getting ready. We're not going to have a splash because you don't know how to splash. We just go straight through. Okay. Yeah. So when we go in that water tomorrow, don't be surprised by it. And please, if we have to, I don't know, jump a two centimetre log out, please, ooh, we're off. Please don't jump out of it absolutely huge so I can't turn you for the next fence. Yes! That is basically our aim for tomorrow. I thought I would talk more about that tomorrow morning. Today is just about prep and basically a life update for you guys. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, right. We've got another canter and then I will leave you until I am on Spritey. Let's see if we can get right lead with the one hand camera filming. <laughs> And canter. Yes! Good girl! This one's a very short one though, isn't it? Oh, and we got a bit of rain. Whoa. <laughs> oh, you clever pony. You're getting more and more like Sprite every day. You know where the start is and where the finishes is. Finishes is? Finishes are. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, daffodils. Oh, they're starting to flower. That means spring is well and truly on its way, doesn't it, Addy? Actually, you've been telling me that enough over the past few weeks, maybe. Being a bit excited. Ooh, yeah, like this. Oh, oh, I mean, we did ride up this a minute ago, but now on the way down, that's a bit scary. <laughs> Good girl. Any 
ride number two. Stay off the grass, stay off the grass. Right, you know that, don't you? And I've forgotten to say to Nala to go in her bed, so she's coming along as well. She gets very excited. It's so funny when it's Addy, she knows that she can't come with me. Just because I worry that Addy might spook or something like that and Nala being in her own little way, whereas I don't famous last words and I had a horrible dream as well last night, so <laughs> maybe I shouldn't be saying this. But yeah, she knows when Sprite comes out that quite often she does get to go with us. I have felt recently I've got Sprite out probably quite regularly, most days. And some days are literally just a walk. And I'm finding that she is feeling really good for it. Little and often, like I say, we go for a walk. I'm like 20 minutes, if that. And that's probably what tonight is going to be. But that is actually better than nothing. Or probably better than going for like a two-hour hack. Um, I did take her to the beach last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday. Nala, here please. Good girl. And she absolutely loved it. As we can all imagine, she had the best of times. Nala, back here, please. Thank you. Good girl, stay. You're a good girl. And you are, Spritey. Go on then, off you go. Oh, that wasn't the direction I was expecting you to go. <laughs> good girl. Just thought I would show a little bit because I know people often ask like, how does it work when you take the, the dog out with the horse? Um, well, we do on Instagram. I probably haven't shown it very much on YouTube, but Nala does get to come out with me quite often with Spritey, and she is, I've got to admit, not always great, but she is pretty good, and she will stay near me, and we've also, so this is the only, the worst part of the road, but we then turn left down here. We're on a private road, and we're on a private road for quite a while where we can do a nice loop and then come back, and then again, we've only got this little bit of stretch of road, so it does make it an awful lot easier. But anyways, back to my, well, I'm blabbing as it is. Sorry, I don't I feel like we're having like a proper little catch up. I feel like I haven't spoken <laughs> to the camera, to the phone for a very long time. Like even on Instagram, I haven't really done any chatty stories for a while. So you're kind of just getting it all now. Um, but I'm, whether that's nerves, whether that's how my stage fright is coming out. I was gonna say, I'm pleased that I feel confident enough to speak. But maybe it's coming out of nerves of just absolutely rambling. But anyways, I was just saying, I was really dithering about taking her to the beach on Sunday. And actually, I want, I need to, not I want to and I need, and I need to, absolutely take every opportunity I can get to take Spritey where I can because she is feeling super at the moment she's feeling so good um i think i've been schooling her once a week for quite a few weeks now and i think that's really helped her as well nothing intense but just getting her to keep staying supple basically and then like going to the beach you know when she was oh she was just feeling fab and i'm annoyed at myself for even dithering and i'll be honest the dithering was because i was like can i be bothered <laughs> if i'm totally honest it was yeah i was like oh it's so much effort i've got to hitch up the trailer then drive down there and it really isn't an effort to be able to enjoy them so i feel terrible that i even had those thoughts now but i made myself do it and like i say i'm very pleased that i did because we had a whale of a time didn't we spritey and nala came along as well that was lovely because she she was absolutely shattered trying to keep up with you spike because you were a little a little bit quick and strong and just loving life can't complain because she was loving life but anyways i'm gonna enjoy the hack miss Brighty and nala and then i will catch up back with you when i am back and starting to pack i've got to do all the stables and stuff the normal boring usual daily tasks like the hay nets and the water and i need to bring straw down and give them their dinner and then we'll get on to packing i'd like to say this is easier than addy but no it's why you can't go that way nala I'm abound.
got to admit, guys, it feels so strange to be on my phone. I wasn't planning on starting the vlog today and I obviously left my camera at home. I know that the sound on the Sony camera is so much better than the phone, but it is what it is. So anyways, you're still seeing the content. Um, ponies are done. They're just eating their dinner. My mum has helped me out whilst I was grooming, hence the reason I've no longer got the coat on because I got rather hot. Um, they have had nice, big, fresh beds. So that was Sprite here and Addie's. Oh, good job I did come and check Addie because I haven't actually done the bolt up. So she's got a lovely big bed as well, haven't you? I'm not coming to disturb you. You've had a really nice groom using all the exclusive brushes, working our way through all the ones, except for the last one, admittedly. And that's because I don't like to use that until like, you know, the very end result, which is obviously going to be tomorrow morning. But you work down through them all. I am absolutely gutted because I actually did film a vlog with Marta, who owns and runs Exclusive, back before Christmas. And somehow I ended up formatting a SD card that had all the footage on it. And I'm absolutely gutted because it was so good, so informative. So if I've got time tomorrow morning... I will talk through the brushes that I am using, but I just thought I'd do a, like a little cheeky time lapse for this evening. So she's had like a good green tonight and then I can go over the same process tomorrow morning. But since Marta has been down, would you believe I actually haven't bathed either of my ponies? Um, and I can believe it when Marta told me that she only bats her horse twice a year and the rest of the time is using these brushes. And I've actually kept those brushes to only use on good times, like when they are clean after a bath. But actually, they are so good from cleaning from the skin all the way to the top layer that I have made myself use them. Don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not using them every day, but I definitely would say that I do use a cup, I don't do like the whole process like all the time, but I do use certain of the brushes and my technique now you get like a little, I'll talk about this more in the morning when I've actually got the camera because I think my phone is going to probably run out of space. Shock horror. Um, but you've got basically a rubber curry comb and then you clean the brush as you're going and then that is what gets all the dirt and the dust out of the coats. But the saddle, everything like I've got a little pile there behind me. Um, the saddle is all ready to go. I've given my bridle a wipe over and yeah, everything there. So that needs to go into my car. Then have got, what have we got? We've got my TI-22 Champion Body Protector, which obviously definitely need. I've got Martingale, which actually that can now go up. Mum's cleaned my little fluffy bits for me. So thanks, Mum. So that can go with the bridle. Um, passport, my obviously my pink free jumps which i can't wait to talk a little bit more again about that tomorrow or that that isn't very good going with the background of the red is it but the saddle underneath the cover it will go very well um have got numbness there i'm hoping i can get home and wash one of those numbness um and my boots as well so they're going to come home with me and then i've got my clothes that i washed today drying um and my boots there i've just got to go print my number pop that into my number bib and then load this up. I might put this in the car now, go do my number bib, and then I am done here for this evening. Nala, are you stealing Sprite's food? Yes, you are, aren't you? <laughs> you can really tell that I wasn't prepared for uh, vlogging today because I can't say that my outfit really goes. Um, but these, I've got to admit, oh, did you notice that? Somebody's just run out with a carrot, Nala. Are you having one of your five a day? Oi, hello, stop ignoring me. I <laughs> probably can't see it on the phone. Um, these are the autumn winter riding tights from Toggy. And I have obviously had Toggy riding tights in the past, but these are, they're a different material, which I probably should have done my research. Like I said, I wasn't prepared to be vlogging today, um, but they are super cozy and warm, which is the reason that I put them on. But I do think they are different material to previous versions, but I really, really love them. Um, they're nice, thick, still completely and utterly flexible, can do everything. I can do my squats, everything you can do in them. Um, and then I've got from the summer, which really doesn't go, does it? The uh, base layer on, but the colours and then obviously my wellies. It's not all really going, but like I said, I wasn't really prepared for that. Um, not that I really think about my outfit when I know that I'm vlogging. But anyway, let's pop my coat back on. Go get my number. Load the car up. I'm very much fingers crossed that we haven't forgotten anything. I might have to just do a little bit of a checklist when I get home. I've also been organised and got the dumpy bag full of hay lid ready for tomorrow morning. So that I can fill up a hay lid. So annoyingly... 
I haven't got a spare hay net at the moment. I really need to go shopping. I also need a spare leather head collar because she pulled away the other day. And thankfully she had that on because it then snapped. But I do need to get a spare leather head collar and also a couple more hay nets because I want to take a spare one as well because Connor and Addy at all of their haylage on the way back from Pontypool last time. So I want to make sure that she has got plenty of grub. Good morning. I missed your nay, didn't I? I might go get another one. Hello. And we're back to the camera. Whee! Right, it's actually quite nice to be here in daylight for a while. Well, yeah, yeah, it's daylight. Yeah, it is. You guys are going to have some brekkie. And then I've just got a few last bits. I'll be honest. <laughs> you can tell. I woke up in the middle of the night. I haven't been having the best nights of sleep. And I was like lying there. And then I was like, right, just go through them. What you've... <laughs> you know, like you do, your random thoughts. I was like, go through what you need for today and like just double check that you haven't forgotten anything. And I was going through my outfit and I can't believe I forgot it, but I forgot a hat. So I'm glad I did. Um, and also a whip that I knew was in the back of my car. And I was like, oh, I don't want to not see it. So yeah, randomly I have a pen next to my bed and I was like, just write it in the dark. I've done quite well, but not the W on the whip. So need to just grab those last little bits, but yeah, get them their breakfast first. For Addy, Numna, my clothes, the whip, hat, which I'm um, just double check is the right hat, which I'm sure it is, yeah, and got the cross country colours on it. Grab coffee, and let's do some hay nuts. around and yeah things are being packed and stuff like that you keep walking your bum into me i think you want to scratch but i'm now gonna go over with the occlusive brushes again like i did last night but i obviously only time lapsed that so i thought i would talk a little bit more about that of which ones i'm using um probably won't be able to pronounce the names but we'll give it a go so you start off with you've always got this in your hand always so this is the rubber curry comb and it's really like quite it's firm but it's soft at the same time so it is like flexible and you start off as you'll see i go around and it's basically working up the dust to the top of the coat and getting getting it moving basically and then for addy's color so because of like having black dark legs she follows the bay black um pack so they come in you can get a universal so you can do all of them or you can get it individual to your horse's color so like spritey has got who's trying to bite addy's bottom maybe that's why she's trying to move around for me that is a completely different set again some brushes do like appear in other packs but maybe in a different process different order so we're starting off with the parkour and you can see hopefully um but first of all, just going over. And you can do it all through the main, everything. So this is only gonna be a quick room because obviously yesterday I did a much longer one. Now Marta had a really good process like going, like you should clean your brush after every stroke, but I'm not going to that good, am I? <laughs> one of my favorite parts is that you can see all the dust being collected in that and then when you tap it on the ground you can see how much is no longer in your horse's coat 
Next up is the Lipizana. Lipizana? Lipizana? Lipizana, there is an N in there. <laughs> Hopefully I'm saying these right. Something to also know is that when you do clean out your brush, that you clean it out with the curry comb at the bottom and the brush goes over the top because otherwise you aren't really being effective because if you clean it that way, all the dust is just being moved, but you're just moving it within the brush. Whereas that way it's going into the curry comb, falling out of the brush into there and being collected. And then that's when you get your reward when you see how much dust you're getting out. <laughs> Okay, so we're now on to the third brush of the pack, and this is the Cavalier. So what we've done so far, the first brush, the parkour, parkour, I can't say that right, is cleaning basically the skin. Then the second one, which was the Lipizana, that is cleaning from like the root of the coat. So again, just up from the skin basically. And now we are starting to get to the top of the coat and to create start to create the shine so this is what the cavalier does brush now so this is probably one of my favorites and this is the kind of brush that I would when you've done all the work at home and then you take to a show especially like um eventing and it does also whoop, don't drop it also works for doing quarter markers as I was shown by Marta and um, so this is the coat gloss so kind of as it says on the brush on the tin is to then be working on that shine within and it's soft enough that if you've got one that's a bit sensitive, it's a good brush to do the head with. So I haven't done the head yet. Not that she's really sensitive like that, but she likes to try and eat the brush, don't you? Yes, yes, as demonstrated. Don't be silly. You're just a baby. That's why. Good girl. even believe like all the work that I've done so far and yet you still apparently bays are known for just forever producing dust but you are looking shiny you are looking shiny and then the final brush which I'll be honest is just so lovely and soft that I don't like to use it very often um but we're gonna use it today especially for the vlog but this is the diva so if i turn that around it's like that it's so soft but the idea of this so i've always known my mum has always taught me like to use a cloth i've got a drawer in there full of cloths to like wipe them off and like to really like almost buff them up this is essentially the same obviously it's better than a tea towel old tea towel um but the idea is is that the softness like this is buffering them up but everything all that you catch like the dust is caught within the brussels which is why it is designed like that then lastly is the tail which Marta said the best way to do it is to twist it then leave like the bottom like that out and brush that and that helps and to use like a dandy brush not like a plastic curry comb or anything I did brush through it yesterday so it's quite good and then you just let bits go at a time and work your way up the tail which was I've never ever heard of doing a tail like this but I've got to admit it works it doesn't pull any hair out and it gets all the tangles out but thankfully like I said I did this for quite a while yesterday Oi. oh and take that 
that he's being painted as well. Oh, I'm in the shadow. Are you looking good? Hey, you shiny. Shiny, shiny. Just getting prepping for the next few weeks because soon we'll be going to venting. So you know, it was true venting today. Hey. You get all that proper full on year of excitement of venting to this time, Addy. She was like, I've no idea what you're saying to me, Mum. But okay. a little bit bitter I thought it was gonna get warmer as the day went on but it's rather cold isn't it Addy? but we are tacked up and ready we have just watched one go in the 80 but they are stopping mid-class to be able to have a course walk which is what I'm hoping to get into we're all ready to go now <laughs> there we go that's my course walk I've watched one go round so we know when we go into the arena where I'm going it's looking nice, whether I'll be saying that after I've walked it, but it's looking good. Going completely different direction to what it was before and the show jumping's completely different. So let's go get up and close to them. Just another sunny day in Southern California. It's where the people came to play. is a long time to be able to walk a course but it's not for an arena eventing course I may have had to just run a lot of that didn't get over to the final fence but I think I can see it and hopefully just got to kick on to that last one everyone's got the same to come out of the arena but otherwise it's all looking good just got a little bit of a twisty turny bit Mommy, at the end just make sure go. that my brain is concentrating knowing where I'm going left and right but otherwise excited let's crack on put your bridle on hat and body protector and Get done there! Yes. I'm gonna go tackle it, aren't we, Addy? I would say there isn't so many testing lines as there was last time, but I really don't want to jinx myself, so I'm not gonna say any more to that. Addy warmed up really well. We had no nappiness to get into the arena or anything like that. Could have maybe potentially had a little bit longer, but we were ready to go. She had warmed up over the jumps nicely. Now here I decided to cut in between three and the back of number six so that I didn't have such a long run up to number one. We got a lovely stride to that and landed on the correct lead. Then again, coming round to number two, I wanted to give her up and then bring her back nice and balanced and again we got a really nice stride over that one now this was quite a sharp turn back on yourself but again she coped with that i was really really chuffed with her in this phase just making sure that we got onto our line on number four there number three almost makes you want to go all the way out to the fence but we got onto the straight line and she jumped it again nicely that one i saw a bit long and then that one i just number six just kind of kept with the rhythm and thought just keep it to this stride now coming around here and just went proper spooky how i even managed to get her over the first part but then of course we had lost all concentration so i decided 
Stand her at the fence, which by the time I'm doing this voice note and <laughs> redoing this, I now know I needed to keep her there for longer. Now she was still spooky and you can see her bum wanting to drift out, but we didn't. We did stay straight. And then I thought, right, kick on. I want her to know that I'm meaning this. I did give her a little tap just behind my leg there just to say we are jumping this roll top because I didn't want to have another stop at that. And she gave me a little buck out to say, don't touch me. Um, I'm going, mum. But it was just more for me, maybe just a bit of reassurance. But she went nicely over that log up the bank. And we're in a good rhythm here, trying not to let her get away from me. And we started, but she was still, and especially between those two bigger chicanas where the big ditches are, it almost shot us out of that. So how we just got over that log, I was pleased. And then coming down to the one where we had to make sure we stayed straight, see our line on the dog leg. Now it's my time for my mistake on this course. I'm coming down here. You see I slow her down because I'm going, where is my number seven? Where's number seven? Then I see it, I react, and I just sort of wing her at it. And Addie being a young horse needs much more preparation. And I didn't even keep her at the fence. Then she had that little moment of nappiness there. That's the only nappiness that she's had all day where tension crept in, we got the wrong leg, but I brought her back, asked for canter again, we got the lead and she jumped it no problem. That was just entirely my fault. I will take that. I We're only human at the end of the day. Like our horses, they're not machines. Mistakes do happen. But we're now on to, I'd say probably the second part of the course, and I actually feel that she's getting going now, and these sort of turns that we're doing a little bit tighter is helping keep my canter a bit more back and a bit more balanced I brought her back for trot for there so that we came down that ramp nicely and balanced which we did then again we have another turn here which I think helps our canter not getting too flat and too long she gets that one really nicely then we're heading on to jump before the water which she jumps in she doesn't hesitate we do have to make a bit of a turn to the left she did a mighty jump out again um, I thought there was going to be another stride. So we finished her really well. And then this is the final fence where I do feel I was riding positively. But Addy just said, Mum, I need to have a little look. I'm not quite sure. It's leaving the arena. It's a little bit different. She's never really done anything like that. I let her have a look. Represented and bless her, she jumped it the second time. And I did notice even when she landed onto grass, she was a bit like, oh, that feels weird. But we completed and I think it was a huge improvement from last time. Now for the favourite part of the day, I will do a debrief, but the walk over to the cafe. I actually rang mum because she told me off for keeping her in suspense last time. But obviously we all know that she was just a bit spooky, but we'll do a full debrief in a minute. I'm going to actually, actually both me and Arthur are going to turn into some cheesy chips, which I'm very excited for. So let me scoff them down and then I'll do a full debrief. Actually, maybe I'll watch it back now as well whilst I'm waiting for the chips and then I can do a proper pop a little round up <laughs> my yummy cheesy chips very good cheese and lots of sauce okay the debrief hasn't actually happened but we're now in watching or oh, now in walking of course for carry on she's stepped up to 100 this time and not that the height i think is any different but the technicality of the lines is quite a lot that's the white house for that one and then there's another one that she's not overly keen on either, which is 10 to 11, so we'll go, go walk it. When you stand the other side of it, it makes it look absolutely humongous. <laughs> Sorry. I've got to jump it. <laughs> so if I jump that straight? Come to here, check. Yeah, we'll just stay straight until you see a line. Yeah. Until you see your straight line. Yeah, and then you got a nice two strides before it. Yeah. I can do it. Go on then. Go on over. Go on. Give me a hand. I can. Give it. I can show. <laughs> yes. No. no. Eleven, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Eleven. Then where's your I've twelve? Done it. I done it. Well done. And Scooby did it. No. Yes. No. He carried you over. No, I did. 
<laughs> you can get out that one, can you? Yeah. Ready? Yeah, it's like so. <laughs> Need a run up. Right in. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Connor. Yeah, you're getting out now. It's your turn, isn't it? So we've just walked the line. So Carrie Ann is happy. Um, has got the challenge. Exactly what she wanted out of entering the 100 is to have the challenge of it. Um, and I thought now is the perfect time before we get Connor out and get ready is to just debrief of my round. So I actually, her warm up and everything I thought was really, really good. She was very well behaved, no nappiness like she was a little bit last time. She just got on with it, got in there and yeah, pleased with her. Then she started the show jumping and actually I was thinking, I was like, she feels so good. She was getting the right cantilades after each of the fences. And then we come around to the double. And she was also getting like the right strides. When I wanted to add one in, um, when I saw a bit of a long one, she was listening and respecting me for that. So thank you, Addy. You were very good in that aspect. Then it got to the double. And obviously the roll top was like literally right there. And I think Carrie said that a horse went through the water as well. So it made a splashing sound. Whether that's, yeah, I don't know. Um, I've only been able to watch it on the tiny screen of the camera. But whether that's what she spooked out or it was just all perfect timing happening at the same thing. Who knows? I don't know. Um, <laughs> you're making me um, I didn't realise my hat is not straight either. Though she just went sideways. Um, I managed to get her over the first part, obviously, as you've seen. But unfortunately, couldn't keep the power there to get over the second part. So then, because it was show jumping, we have to wait for the first fence to be put back up and jump like both parts of the double then we come around to it was the first we obviously then had to go over the cross-country roll top as our number one i did give her a little tap behind my leg just to go we're going first time like i mean it come on let's do this she gave me a little butt she was like don't touch me <laughs> um but it did the trick because we then got over it and then up and around all the course she was very spooky so i'm pleased that we got as far as we did um I think again she's just trying to take on jumping the jumps that are spooky as well as things going on before and after the fences she just I feel like she just goes her brain just a bit fried and I just think it's just getting out as much as we possibly can to gain that experience and the more she does the better she's going to get so I don't actually feel I felt worse last time than I do this time because I actually can see improvements like we jumped the roll top first time she show jumped lovely warmed up better and then we did unfortunately number seven I did forget my way a little bit so I kind of feel like I should be blaming myself but equally when I watched it back there was plenty of time maybe I just didn't prepare her enough but I felt like we had a good few strides that she could have gone but no we didn't and we didn't get over it but again she didn't stop twice she just has a look comes around jumps it the second time so I can't complain about that um I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that I think it was my fault and then carried on went over some more like coming down the bank jump at the bottom um, and she did them all nicely still spooky fied looking at things she was much more confident going into the water she had no hesitation and it jumped out nicely as well and then the final fence is jumping out of the arena again onto grass which i've got to admit is a little bit different and something that she isn't used to obviously she's found it scary last time the roll top jumping from the show jumping to the cross country in the same arena whereas this time it was actually jumping boo it was actually jumping out of the arena so i do kind of understand that i did ride her positively but she just felt she needed to have a little look at it didn't you yes but again like i say she went over it no problem the second time so we completed it we haven't had to walk off we haven't got eliminated she hasn't stopped at every single fence so actually i'm just looking at the positives and not dwelling um which i think actually i didn't do last time we were here we are at camp here in two weeks time so that's going to be hugely beneficial to us intense training for a weekend and getting 
in and around all those cross country fences. I'm hoping that the actual grass cross country is going to be open as well and we can get out on grass. But actually, I really want to have a lesson in there around all those fences and see what she's like in a lesson environment when maybe her blood isn't quite so up, whether adrenaline doesn't help the spookiness. Anyways, that is enough debriefing blabbing from me. On to Connor and Kerry Ann. <laughs> Are you ready for it, boy? Hey, you ready? You two, I have not stopped eating in like your all day feast, have you? <laughs> we got three hay nets on the go. Well, and done eating. He's, he's done, done eating. eating. Just. He's been eating the whole time though, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't he? Yeah. We'll get you some water as well. I think you probably would like to have another drink, wouldn't you? Both of you, because they're both drinkers. I can't believe how much they're, uh, they're drinking. <laughs> probably because they're eating so much. Room are calling for number eight and nine. If you can make your. <laughs> I miss that annoying me. <laughs> We're all a bit fresh today. I think it's the colder weather. I just seen Mummy's not gonna able to do that. There she is. What? Nice. It's a few days later, it's now Tuesday. I've just got back. The ponies have had their vaccinations done and now out enjoying this beautiful, glorious day. I've already been for a ride and lead, get them ridden early this morning. And I keep meaning each day to get this vlog finished. I am aware that it is already probably quite long, so I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I've obviously watched and watched and re-watched again my round. I definitely think the first spook was not at the show jump whatsoever. It was definitely at the cross country fence that was sat in between. And I think it didn't probably help that the horse that was before me jumped into the water and it was all just like bang in that moment. And I think once Addy gets into that spooky mindset and has lost the focus and like I say is spooky, I think it's very hard to get her back from that but I think that will just come with the more that we do and the more less well, the less re the more we do the less reactive and the easier to settle her back again if you were like in training and she went that spookiness you would just give her a walk try and just get her mind back grounded and to just chill out and obviously when you're in that competition atmosphere you don't have that opportunity to be able to do it so yeah i think we've just got to keep getting out there also we've done things like bicton and chard and she was nowhere near as spooky as what she was at Pontespool. Pontespool is apparently, it's basically my nemesis and I try so so hard to be like no I love Pontespool because I do, I think it is absolutely brilliant there but I do know that some people do have horses that do find it a spooky arena but we did show jumping there last year and she was absolutely fine. I think show jumps isn't a problem, I think it's just all of it and like I said she got that spook and then that kind of just set her off and actually she did well to get round what she did the one into number seven I will hold my hand up that was completely and utterly my fault and that again is where she's just a bit green 
that she doesn't she's not quick enough to think oh okay you mean that one mum okay she needs that preparation before offence and unfortunately I didn't give it to her so I will take that one Addy um, and the final one I think was just a different kind of fence that she hasn't seen but she went over it a second time so all in all an improvement from last time I think and like I say we've got camp next weekend at Pontesville which I'm really looking forward to it'd be nice to be able to do some of those lines when she isn't quite so spooky at the other jumps and paths that she's got to go through and things like that and something I'm taking away as a massive positive for me I've had a look through the photos and the one I like is one that I've I bought last time that was very similar so I haven't actually purchased any but in all of them I felt like my lower leg something that always is one of my bugbears I look at photos I watch back the videos and I'm always like what is your lower leg doing but actually for the first time I really feel like my lower leg was in the correct position my heels were down I still had a little bit of twisty toes out but nothing as bad as I've had before so I'm taking that as a real big win for myself. I have been working really hard to stretch and lengthen my leg muscles basically, all of it, my calves, my hamstrings, um, also like my hip flexors. I've been doing so much yoga which I've actually really enjoyed. A little bit of a different kind of challenge but yeah I'm quite a few weeks into it now. It definitely takes weeks to get yeah I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm anywhere near good but I am noticing the improvements when I'm doing the yoga sessions and I'm now noticing it when I'm in the saddle so yeah really really chuffed with that oh Spritey's just having a roll I really want to take their rugs off because it's so beautiful but there is that chill wind like my hand is cold from being like not in a glove or up my sleeve so it's still not quite warm enough to take it off I think it's like one or two degrees so yeah it's still pretty chilly I hope as always guys that you have enjoyed this vlog if you have of course please do give it a like leave a cheeky comment and of course if you don't already please do hit that all important subscribe button but until next time we haven't got anything coming up this week this weekend coming we're actually going away just for a nice little two night break away with our friends Adam and Kaz um, and then it is go 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 with eventing that's actually something I'm doing today Morton's ballot is at 12 o'clock so I'm going home to get entered but of course we've then got camp eventing we've got loads coming up so yeah make sure that you are subscribed and you'll get the notifications when the new vlogs go live but yeah until then guys I will see you all very very soon bye